out more than one pH unit away from there where the graph is moving up or moving down very rapidly. Okay? I get that, but I don't get how that relates to pK and all like that. Okay, that's fine. That, that's, I'm glad you're asking. So how does that relate to the pKa value? Okay? The pKa value is that flattened out point. Right? The further we get away from that flattened out point, the more the pH changes, okay, as it, it, it starts going up. Right? We could calculate, using the Henderson-Hasselbach, what the approximate number of ones with proton on or proton off are as the pH changes relative to that pKa. If you remember the graph yesterday, we saw it going way up the further we went. And I said, well, if we go up here and we're one pH unit away, we would have 10 times as many molecules with the proton off as we would with the proton on. Remember that? Okay. Then for estimation purposes, we can say, well, essentially the protons are off at that point because I've got 10 times as many that have it off as have it on. If I go to the other direction, I go to a, a more than P, a pH unit below, I discover I've got 10 times as much with the proton on as I do with the proton off. So I say, well, essentially the proton is on. So that's where that basis for my rule was. That's where that rule came from. It said, if the pH is more than one unit below the pKa, the proton is essentially on. And if the pH is more than one unit above the pKa, the proton is essentially off. Does that make sense? Okay. So. It becomes mental gymnastics, and you don't have to do it in your head. You know, you can write write it down on a piece of paper, and I would encourage you to do that, especially as you're learning how to do this, is that you would write down all the different possible forms. Okay, here's where the proton on, here's where the proton off, here's where the proton on, here's where the proton off. In the molecule like this, you'd have six different things, right? Proton on, proton off, proton on, proton off, proton off, proton on, whatever. My mouth, you know. This, is, this is, always gets me in trouble. My mouth always goes faster than my mind does. You can get in a good fight that way sometimes, right? Anyway, so is that, does that help? Okay. Yes, sir? One question I have, uh, this is probably why you don't like, like the term basic. Yeah. Is, uh, you know, you think of, uh, you know, plus, you know, all these protons on the system with plus two charge. You think about it as acidic, right? You have all these hydrogen on there. No, I don't want you thinking about it that way. Acidic really simply means the ability to donate protons, which maybe is what you're saying, okay? And that's all it means, okay? So, but something acidic simply means it's in the process of donating those protons, and that's gonna depend on the pH, whether it actually does that or not. So, go ahead with your question, I'm sorry. Well, no, uh, so I was thinking, you have the aluminum group, uh, one's the one's the maximum charge, what is it the acidic? So, you don't think about the acidic, this is where you're gonna get into trouble. Think about it in terms of groups. Thinks about it in terms of carboxyls and amines. So the maximum charge on an amine is a plus one. Well, yeah, I'm trying to say that, 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 that these are good. So the, the, the total charge on these molecules is plus two. But it's because I added up the charges of each of the individual groups. Okay. So you don't want to just memorize this molecule is going to have a maximum of two, this is going to have a maximum of one. You want to say, what's the different groups? Because the individual charge is going to vary with the group and the pH, okay. right? So if you know that, a, that an amino has a charge of zero or plus one, and I say pH is below the pKa, you say, oh, pH below pKa by more than one unit, proton is on, that's got a charge of plus one. I can solve that. But if I, if I memorized every possible situation, I got a lot of memorization to do. Make sense? I saw another hand up here somewhere. Uh, back here. Good question. The answer is yes. And you might say, oh my God, there's even more to memorize, right? Except for you, you already know it. If I give you that the pKa, for example, of the carboxyl is 2.2, and the pKa of the alpha amino is uh, 9, and the pKa of the R group amino is 12, the order in which they come off is from smallest to largest. Because remember that the lower the pKa, the more acidic it is, the stronger of an acid it is. So the first one that comes off is this one, the second one that comes off will be this one, the third one that will come off will be this one. Does that make sense? Yes? Yep. So, but on a single I'm sorry. They'll become activated at probably different pHs on the same protein. 
Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so our question is, you know, you've got all these different possible ways the protons come off. You've got 20 different amino acids. You've got all these pKa values, and oh my God, how can I ever possibly know? And the answer is, everything exists in the same pH. Right? Everything is in the same pH because that solution, that liquid that's in the cell, is all at the same pH. Yeah, no, that's not my question. I actually have an inverse question, which is why would you want something that, why would you want this all? Okay. Okay. It's it, it's it's a very good question. Okay. So this is a byproduct. It's not an important. It's not important for uh, necessarily the activity. Although in some cases it is. This is a, a byproduct. This is a an environment in which the protein has to exist. So at a given pH. I can predict every single one of these is a proton on, proton off, or not, and that is what's going to cause the protein to have its shape. Right? And so when I change that pH, then some of them lose it, some of them gain it, et cetera, et cetera, and all of a sudden that shape, which was based on attraction of charges and so forth, now is no longer the same. Understand? Okay. Okay, other questions? Quick question, and then I'll move on. Oh, yeah. Okay, so some of the R groups can have chiralities of their own. Does that affect anything? It can affect the rotation of light, but it doesn't affect anything about their properties. And yes, they will be assembled in, in appropriate ways. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Consistent ways, I should say, not appropriate ways, consistent ways. Okay, let's move forwards. So, plunging forwards, blindly. All right, now, abbreviations, there they are. No, you don't have to know them, okay? Unusual amino acids, okay? Um, we see some modified forms of amino acids. So I said there's 20, and you said, oh, there's always an exception. We always have something that doesn't follow the rule, right? Well, as a matter of fact, the ones that we see that are exceptions are modified after they're in a protein. They don't go in as hydroxyproline. They go in as proline, which is one of the amino acids. But they get mo proline gets modified after it's in some proteins. So the rule that I gave you about there being 20 amino acids going into proteins, that's basically correct. There's only one other one that makes it in, uh, and we'll talk about it later. Okay, But these are modified after they're in a protein. They don't go into the protein in the modified form. So only 20 go into making up proteins. This guy right here is thyroid hormone. It comes from tyrosine. Okay? Hydroxylysine, hydroxyproline, we find in the most abundant protein in the human body. Does anybody know what the most abundant protein is in the human body? Collagen is the most abundant protein in the human body. We'll say more about that when I talk about proteins. Okay. Um, Serotonin, useful for going to sleep. Many of you have, probably have high serotonin levels right now, right? Serotonin comes from tryptophan. Okay? No, you don't have to know those structures. No, you don't have to know those interactions. I'm just showing you some basic things. Okay? Dopamine. Dopamine is important in neurosignaling in your brain. Dopamine is involved in pleasure. It's a, it's a, it's a uh, neurotransmitter that uh, helps pleasure neurons to signal. Dopamine can uh, give you a very euphoric, very good feeling. It's involved in drug addiction, not surprisingly, as a result of that. Okay? Epinephrine. Epinephrine is what we also know as adrenaline. And these guys, you can see, are coming again from tyrosine. So we see amino acids now that are precursors of other molecules in other words, they can do things besides go in and make proteins. They can become other molecules that are important for our body. Okay. Now, let's think about ionizing. So you had the question, do we have to know the order? And the order, I said, was determined by the pKa values of each group. And so I can tell which one's going to lose the proton first which one's going to lose the proton second, et cetera, et cetera. Let's look at a simple amino acid, okay? Here's a very simple schematic amino acid. This simple amino acid has an R group 
That does not ionize. That can include the nonpolars. That can include the polars. Okay? But it would not include the acids or the bases, right? Or the amino containing, as I like to say. So we have simple ones. Simple ones only have two ionizations to worry about. One ionization of the carboxyl group, one ionization of the amine group. And since the carboxyl group has a pKa of 2.34 in this case, we know that the carboxyl group is going to lose the proton first. And that's what's happened here. As we started adding more and more NaOH to this solution, we started off with the protons on, and then the NaOH started pulling protons off, and we got to something that looked like this. We created an amino acid that had a plus one charge here, a minus one charge here, an overall charge of zero. And that molecule has a name. Okay? The name is zwitterion. A zwitterion is a molecule that has equal numbers of positive and negative charges, Overall charge of zero. Yes, ma'am. Yes, I will. Z W I T T E R O N. A zwitterion. Somebody told me that in German that means hermaphrodite. Does anybody know German? Is that right? Yeah. It's got some pluses. It's got some. It's got equal pluses and minuses. That's kind of. I didn't know that until just last term. I don't speak German. That's kind of a cool thing. Zwitterion means hermaphrodite in German. Okay, now here is uh, a, an amino acid that has an amino containing R group. We're going to think of it simply as having an NH3 plus to keep it simple, right? So we start with all the protons on. And remember, I said that when we start with all the protons on, we had a charge of zero for the carboxyl, we had a charge of plus one for the alpha amino, and we had a charge of plus one for the R group amino. Overall charge was plus two. PKA of the first one was the alpha carboxyl. Here the alpha carboxyl is 1.82. We take a proton off of there, we get a minus one charge. We take a proton off on the alpha, and actually I lied, in the case of histidine, histidine has a PKA of about six. Um, in general, I, I call all the R groups as high, but this is one place where it's not. At a PKA of six, this guy starts coming off, so we have a charge of zero, minus one, plus one, or an overall charge of of zero, and we lose the last proton over here and become something that has a minus one charge. Now you could memorize each of those, or you could just say, I know what an amine and what a carboxyl has, and Kevin's going to give me the PKAs so I can figure everything out from there. So you're not memorizing PKAs, you're not memorizing structures, but you need to know charges and how they change with respect to pH. Okay? Fair deal? Okay. Let's see, we're cutting through this stuff like butter. Um, let's look at a titration curve. This might be a good way to end the week, okay? A titration curve. Now, you saw schematically what happened to that charge. What happened to the charge? Well, we started with something that had all of the protons on. And this is the simple amino acid that we talked about in the first case. We only had two protons that could come off. We start with all the protons on. If I take a simple amino acid and I put all the protons on, what's the overall charge? Well, the carboxyl has a proton, meaning it has a charge of zero. The alpha amino has a charge of one, and that's the only things that get charged, so this guy must have an overall charge of plus one to start with. I put all the protons on. So when I start my titration at a very low pH, I've got all the protons on because the pH is more than one unit below the pKa. All the protons are on. Plus one. I get to the first pKa and I'm right here. What's the charge at the first pKa? Okay, so this is where you trip up on exam because you want to pull that proton off so bad say, oh, the pKa is magical, that's where it's zero. No, no. It's half off, it's half on. So you want to get in the habit of telling me not to let you...